And we're back. That took about um, oh, five, seven minutes or so on this particular computer. Uh, now you need to enter a username. Normally this would be a first and last name. Uh, um, I'm just going to enter user1 here. Uh, then it asks for a, um, uh, an actual login ID. I'm going to leave this at user1, um, but you can select what you want. Um, the only thing is I would write these down or pick something simple because if you select a username and uh, coming up at this next prompt a password and then forget it, um, it really is um, very difficult to, to, to recover that. Um, I'm just going to choose password. That's easy enough and you need to re-enter that to verify it. Uh, it's going to ask if you want to encrypt your home directory, you know, really for this, uh, uh, for this application um, on your desktop just to play around with. Uh, it's not necessary, but you have that option uh, if you choose. Uh, it's going to configure some things. Um, you almost certainly don't need a proxy. If you needed a proxy, you probably know you needed a proxy, so I'm just going to tab to continue. Uh, leave it blank, tab to continue, and then press enter. Uh, a little bit more configuring here. All right, now we're at a prompt where you can select and install some software um, applying updates. Um, Ubuntu now has an automatic update feature. Um, the default is no automatic updates. It's easy enough to do this manually uh, when you think it needs it. Um, so I'm going to suggest you take the default here, no automatic updates. All right, now we're back. Um, here's where you can install some additional software that uh, is going to be interesting depending on why it is you're installing this product to begin with. Um, DNS, if you want to experiment around with setting up a DNS server, uh, you can do that. Uh, the way you choose these, by the way, is don't, don't press enter right away. You need to arrow up and down to whichever one of these you want to install. And then press the space bar um, to put a little asterisk in that column. Uh, and you keep doing that, um, arrowing up and down and pressing the space bar until you get what you want. Um, and then you can press tab to continue and then press enter. Now, I'm going to suggest that the most useful ones to install are the LAMP server, which includes the Apache web server, uh, MySQL database, PHP scripting. Um, uh, in all likelihood, that's, a, that's kind of a core reason you might want to play around with this product to begin with. Uh, and then open SSH server, that allows you to transfer files back and forth between your host system, your Macintosh desktop, uh, and this virtual machine. So both of those are very useful. Uh, if you see any of those others that you like, uh, by all means go ahead and check them. When you're ready, press tab as I've done to highlight continue and then press enter. Now, it's going to ask for a password for the database root user. Uh, you can leave this blank if you want. Um, that's a little bit of a security risk. Um, you may not care about a security risk on, on this virtual machine, depending on what you're going to be doing with it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and enter one. And then you need to repeat it. Uh, and again, um, either write that down or, or be sure to choose something simple that you're going to remember. Um, it's a little bit easier to recover that password than the, than the system password, but it's, again, it's not trivial, so uh, you want to be careful about that. Uh, it's going to finish this up, um, take a, a few more minutes, so I'll pause and come back at the final prompt. And we're back. Now, this is a new prompt. Uh, if you've worked with previous versions of Ubuntu, you may not have seen this before. Uh, this is actually um, uh, not really anything to be concerned about in this virtual machine setting. Uh, what it's doing is it's telling you whether or not it, it detected any other operating systems. Um, if it detects other operating systems, for example, if you were actually loading this on your Macintosh, um, then it would try to in install a, a bootloader that would allow you to boot into one or the other. But as I say, for, for the purposes of the virtual machine, uh, this message doesn't really have too much meaning, so just accept the default yes to load the uh, grub bootloader to the master boot record. That's just exactly what we want. Uh, and it'll take just a few seconds to do that. Uh, finishes up the installation, a few little house cleaning tasks. Uh, and then it's pretty much um, uh, time to boot into the system. Uh, you don't really need to do anything about the installation media. Um, so you don't have to try to uninstall the ISO uh, at this point. Um, so just go ahead and press enter um, to continue and the system will reboot itself. And we'll give that just a, a minute or two. 
And here we are at a login prompt. So enter the username and password that you put in. So I'm going to enter user1. That was the username. Now when you enter a password, um, if, you're, if you're not used to a Unix system, it does not echo any characters or asterisks or anything. So you might think you're not typing anything in, but you really are. So just type in your password and press enter even though it didn't say anything. And it'll spin for a minute and show the uh, uh, system load. Uh, now down here at the bottom, you're at the command line. That's what you want to be. The um, server, of course, is not a graphical environment, uh, command line environment. Um, so you may want to, um, you know, do a little um, um, practicing on your on your command line utilities and learning a little bit about the the, the um, uh, Unix Linux command line. Uh, but there you go. It's all set. It's um, um, we can do a um, Uh, we can do a um, ifconfig command that shows what our IP address is. Uh, we can verify that we've got a web server uh, running. Uh, press control uh, uh, control command to bring our cursor back. Uh, we can load Firefox. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this IP address in this window. So we're going to do 68. Dot twenty six dot one thirty three and press enter and then you can see that we um, the web server that is running in this virtual machine um, is now working this is the actual default web page for that Apache server uh, so with that said um, that's how you get it installed and um, have fun with it thanks and goodbye.